All right, this is called pine bark mulch. I actually get it to landscape my own house and I pick it up at a local hardware store that starts with the letter L. Earlier in the year, it was $2.99 a bag, which I think was a two cubic yard bag. Went by, you know, the other week, it's $3.68 now. Um, that's a 23% increase in pine bark mulch. I mean, you know, I don't think we're building houses with pine bark mulch, right? And I go to the hardware store and there's pallets and pallets of the stuff here. But I guess that's the thing. It's the opportunity now to charge a lot of money for stuff that we need either to build houses, maintain houses, or utilize in our house. All right, we're going to talk about that today. Welcome to Housing Bubble 2.0 News of the Week, or as I like to call it, another episode of As the Housing Market Turns. Today is the 3rd of May. April is over into another month. Time just flies when you're having fun. Randy Patrick here putting the realism back in real estate. So, you know, I think we've all heard enough about the lumber prices and sort of following this path. And I'm going to go, go down the path for a bit here because, you know, sort of mid-April, we saw that things are out of control. Supply chain collapses leads to lumber frenzy and soaring home prices. So clearly, you know, it costs more money now for builders to build their homes. They're going to pass it on to the consumers, us. It costs more money when you rehab uh, properties for investments. It's going to cost more money when you're doing your own home improvements. All sorts of things are going to basically dip into your pocket for whatever reason. So is, I guess the the question is, do we really have problems here? So that's what all these articles are talking about. Things are now out of control. Everything is a mess. And we're just uh, seeing wide-scale shortages. Well, you know, why is there wide-scale shortages? And I guess that's the problem. Is it a supply problem? Is it a labor problem? They're saying here that, you know, prices have surged more than 60% to record highs of lumber and analysts aren't expecting any relief until late 2021, if not later. Lumber futures is costing, you know, over $1,000. Uh, it's eleven hundred and fifty-seven dollars and fifty cents per thousand board feet. Uh, that was a few weeks ago. Uh, cash markets are also blistering. Um, oriented strand board uses sheeting for walls and roofs. Um, you know, soared to a record nine ninety nine per thousand square feet end of March, up from three twenty nine in June. So basically, it's kind of like anything that has to do with building materials is going to be increased. The reason why? Because they can and because we're going to pay for it. And we're willing to pay for it with the housing prices soaring, continuing to soar, and markets just red hot. It's one of those things where why not? If you know if these guys can you know make extra 20, 30 percent on their products and knowing the fact that you'll pay it, uh, the middleman's not going to pay it, the builders aren't going to pay it, they're going to pass the pricing on to the consumer. Everybody wins, right, except for us, the consumers. So, you know, this is talked about quite a bit here. Um, believe it or not, the, the government's attempts to solve the labor problem crisis have sparked an entirely new crisis, one even more, um, one of even more unaffordable housing. So really, you know, we've had COVID, COVID shut things down earlier in the year. What happened, you know, apparently is lumber yards, sawmills, the, you know, all that original supply chain stuff just basically ground to a halt. So now we're seeing, I guess, you see the results of that right now. So, you know, basically number of people working in U.S. sawmills and doing wood preservation is down roughly 30% from 20 years ago. The number of loggers dropping almost 40% to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. So while automation has reduced the number of workers required to increase efficiencies, analysts view current employment levels as way below demand. So the chronic labor shortage is a significant piece of the puzzle. So what they're saying is that if people aren't working, so either they're not working because they can't work or they're choosing not to work with unemployment, stimulus, whatever, doesn't make sense for them to work, we're now feeling that at the sort of end user, end product, end here, and that's obviously causing delays, causing shortages, causing increased payments, causing houses prices to rise. There you go. But first of all, if you're not already a subscriber to my channel, I'd certainly love it if you would subscribe and help my channel grow. I'd appreciate that. And if you think you're a subscriber, can you just do a little me a favor? Check and smash the subscribe button again because I've been having a lot of issues with subscriber growth uh, and people are complaining or not complaining, they're telling me going, I, I was subscribed, but I've magically mysteriously dropped off. So please grab that, you know, hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate that. All right. So again, the next article that comes out a couple weeks ago basically says what? It says lumber hasn't had a down day since March 26, sending, um, you know, pr home prices soaring even higher. So we just see lumber futures, futures 
rising, rising, rising. It's no supply, no no surprise here. Um, at the same time, demand for new homes increased. People are being told to stay home. People wanted to be at home. There was a tremendous demand for new homes. That coupled with less production and high demand created a surge. So lumber prices have substantially increased. So that's that whole supply and demand thing again. You know the opportunity to increase is there. You know, we didn't produce it, maybe we did, who knows. Uh, it, so again, we're paying for it, same thing. That's made it uh, more expensive to build homes in these new developments, I meaning the supply can't meet all the demand here, adding that the costs have had to be passed on to home buyers. So yeah, no one else has taken the hit but the home buyer. So you out there buying a home, that's why you're taking the hit. Um, you know, this is another, you know, we're talking about the American Wood Council who claims to represent, I didn't know there was an American Wood Council, same uh, claims to represent 80% of the structural wood products industry, uh, basically said the same thing going um, at the beginning of the pandemic, wood product manufacturers were operating under the same uncertainty as the rest of the country. Many curtailed production in anticipation of worker shortages and reduced demand because, you know, stuff wasn't moving. We remember the first couple of months of the pandemic, our sales existing home sales and pending home sales plunged. So they were thinking, okay, well, if, if that's the case, we're gonna pull back and not produce. Then of course, once things open up a bit and, and we saw the shift in where, what people were doing as far as more work from home, the need to improve their own current home to accommodate more people being around or office or whatever in your own home. So then everything surge demanded and these guys were caught unawares. That's what it boils down to. So it's challenging time for everybody. But this came out the other day and I found this very interesting, all right? There is no shortage. Train loads of lumber stats as far as the eye can see. So this is really the gist of the presentation here is the fact that, you know, we're being told that wood is at a premium. We're being told that there's a supply chain issue, yet when you start doing some digging, you find out that, uh, you know what, there's not a supply chain issue. Like, like wood is sitting there. And basically what this, um, and I'll, I'll have all the links to these articles in the information section of the video. But what's so interesting is the fact that there's this guy and he's, I guess you could say, you know, um, I guess, you know, what they're saying is vulnerability of global supply chains here or supply chain disruption. Um, obviously with lumber, it's catapulted prices to the moon. The narrative touted in the public domain is that COVID-19 sparked a dramatic underestimates in capacity by sawmills, etc. In terms of the output, the lumber industry is controlled by just a handful of firms, etc., uh, which make it easier uh, for capacity to be controlled. Uh, maybe there's more to the story uh, and in more investigative journalism needs to be um, done here. So this guy's got a, a YouTube account and he really is, he's actually going to train yards. This isn't even a lumber yard. This basically is a video and a picture of a train yard in Vermont where basically lumber sitting there. So if we have supply chain issues and we have shortages, why is stuff sitting there not moving, etc.? That's the question everybody wants to know. And, um, you know, it basically explains that the train depot has been transformed to a makeshift lumber yard. So train loads of lumber coming out of Canada are, are offloaded here, then transported by tractor trailer lumber yards across the country. I'm astounded about how much lumber is here, and I'm wondering why there's such a problem with at lumber yards. Uh, the facility stretches three eighths of a mile. So basically, this video has gained, you know, 300,000 views and 1,300 comments, etc. But it's interesting to see that when you start delving into stuff, I mean, you know, is there really a supply chain issue? Is there stuff sitting there waiting around, but we're being told that? So what, what's, you know, is it because there's not enough truck drivers now to, to drive the lumber to the local places? Like, who, who knows, right? But this is an interesting quote. One person said, gee, could it be to keep the price gouging and profits up? This whole excuse that due to COVID, this bull has to stop. And I think that is a good point here is that, you know, a lot of stuff we can just blame on COVID. So if something's not working well, it's COVID. If I can't deliver something to you, well, it's COVID. So, you know, it's kind of like COVID is now going to be used as the blanket excuse for reasons why things aren't done, reasons why things are more expensive, reasons why you can't get stuff. So, you know, here we are. And it's too bad there are no investigative reporters left in the world. The lumber story needs to be investigated and exposed. Other person said, this is what happens when a few companies own the entire market, which is which is true. And I know that from a government perspective, I mean, you know, the, the, the I guess the home builders are putting pressure on the current administration to deal with Canada to basically say, hey, you know, let's reduce or, or remove those uh, lumber tariffs that are coming in. Like, let's open stuff up more because we need it so badly here. And that really, uh, there's been no other discussion on that 
since I, I read about that earlier in the year. Uh, there's no lumber shortage. It's just um, these two companies wanting to drive up profits. So, so could the lumber industry, being controlled by just a few players, be pulling the playbook straight out of the diamond industry to limit supply and drive up prices? Well, I don't know if that's the entire story, but I'm sure there's an element to that just because that's what happens. You know, I live in Florida, and, you know, there is a... Um, there's a law in, in at the state level that basically says, and we have certain things like hurricanes that are coming. So you know what happens when there's a hurricane. So your local grocery store, and you know the next day when we see a hurricane, you know far off, you know hitting the the, the leeward islands, nowhere near Florida, but we know it's potentially coming into our little you know box zone area where you have to be worried or, or just got to be aware. You know the next day people are out going to the local grocery stores and they're buying water and toilet paper and the whole bit. So the shelves are cleared out. And then you've got the smaller businesses or the gas stations who do sell water, and suddenly, bang! You know their water that was three nine nine a case is now seven nine nine a case, or, or even, you know, even more. And then the plywood that people get to, you know, put on their windows and stuff that goes up. So price gouging in times of crisis or potential disasters of that that happens all the time. And yeah, there are laws there, but it's just funny that no one seems to be looking at this now, saying, okay, well, you know, we're we talk about you know we can't afford homes. Uh, builders are, 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 you know, are, are raising prices, etc. So what do you do? Well, if this is allowed to go on, it's just being passed on the consumer, and there's no control mechanism here. That's kind of sort of what they're talking about, and it's just typical with what we're doing. But I, I, I mean, I have to agree with the fact that you know this COVID. Like, how long will we be using the COVID excuse? Well, because of COVID, right? So just kind of like that's a you know, blanket statement. Okay, great. Then I, I have no rebuttal for that. I can't argue it because. You know, it's a very broad statement that shows how, you know, that many people can be affected by this pandemic in different ways, etc. So just, I'm not complaining, but I'm just saying that's what's being used right now. That's what's going on. And But in the end, we're starting to see material supplies um, increase. And, you know, this is just wood. So we're talking wood here, all right? Guess what? So I saw this came out the other day. Chlorine prices just explode in time for peak pool season. Hey, isn't that interesting? So like I mentioned about the whole you know, hurricane thing a second ago, uh, suddenly stuff increases. Well, guess what? Um, no, now, everybody knows that a March fire at a plant, um, you know, uh, broke the semiconductors, camel's back, etc. Uh, but now we are talking about, uh, you know, last summer a massive fire broke out at a chemical plant in Lake Charles, Louisiana, after Hurricane Laura passed overhead. The chemical blaze was extinguished after three days and was quickly forgotten until this week when Goldman Sachs reported that uh, the August 2020 fire had sparked industry-wide chlorine shortages and price inflation. So, you know what, what do you do? So if you live in the South like I do, virtually everybody has a pool. You go to some brand name chain pool stores, you go, hey, I need to get chlorine. Suddenly people are saying it's out of control. Um, you know, the markets ha has increased and, you know, we're as, you know, right now, uh, it's, it's May, it's getting hot here and now we'll start, if you don't put chlorine in, tablets in your pool and, you know, et cetera, you're gonna have a green pool and nobody wants that, right? It's harder to clean, et cetera, and it has more damage to the filters and the system, et cetera. So you can take a look at, you know, chlorine prices could be up 58% year over year in the summer months. Um, you know, this just shows, um, um, you know, U.S. Gulf Coast chlorine contract market average price in U.S. dollars in short term. Um, you know, it looks like, uh, yeah, you can see how it's jumping at this point in time. Uh, so it's pr pretty interesting, and you know, the, again, it's a situation here. So they're talking about seeing a shortage, and, and you can see prices about up to sixty percent, um, you know, north of what they normally are. Un un it's unreasonable. Uh, the uh, commentary though is that now that simply means that people are going to move their method of sanitization for their pool to other products, being granular. So if you can't get the tablets or the chlorine, you're going to get stuff you just dump in. It's granular that dissolves, or you can get liquid, right? And then. And here's what's going to happen. We're going to move to other solutions. Um, so how the, how's that going to work out? Well, I'm betting the fact that if that happens, you know, what you're going to do. Sorry, let me go back here. Um, you know, like salt. I have a, I had chlorine for, for a long time, and then I went, you know, it's a pain in the butt, and we actually got a salt water system. So the salt, you put in a bag of salt, and then there's a solenoid that converts the salt and the water into really what is chlorine. Uh, to sanitize your pool, keep it clean, etc. And you know, I can imagine that you know, if the chlorine's expensive, then the people who do the salt products are probably going to go, hmm, uh, maybe we should start charging more for our salt, um, you know, conversion, you know, systems. And then you know, when I go and buy the forty-pound bag of salt for you know ten dollars or twelve dollars at the pool store, I'm going to watch that to see what you know if that goes up in price. So it's all you know. Again, you know, one industry gets hit with it, something else comes out. Then we'll see. We'll see how the supply chain works, and we'll see how. 
the dominoes fall in this. So I would I would assume that the next couple of weeks when I get my next bag of salt, it's probably going to be up a buck or two. And that's just, you know, again, everything's passed on the consumer. So it's interesting to know that, you know, yeah, we're in a housing bind right now. We have issues with the housing market. It's out of control. Uh, it's on fire, as everybody says. It's very, very expensive. Uh, and there's reasons for that. And ultimately, you know, that's to me, that's almost like that's the end product, right? Like, in other words, you know, all these little things are happening in the industry that are causing problems. And, you know, for supply, cost, materials, whatever, and it's not just lumber or chlorine. I mean, you go into a hardware store, other materials are, you know, rebar, concrete, whatever. Like, the, the opportunity to increase pricing is just there right now because when you take a look at the market, it's like, hey, people are still paying for um, these properties and if it keeps going up, everyone's going to get their little piece of flesh along the way. Not until we see any material discounts where I would imagine price points from you know raw materials or or finished materials like you know wood lumber, building products, whatever, are going to come down as well too. So it's actually kind of funny when you see what's going on out there. So it's not just lumber, it's electrical cord, it's drywall, it's anything to do with housing is slowly being inflated um, when you're looking at it from you know the product level as well. And that, but in the end, it's passed on to the consumer. So the end product, the end user who buys that new house or rehabs their house or you know does a, a new addition or they're putting on, you know, you're paying for all the little pieces at the very end level. That's how I look at it. All right. So that's the scoop. So here we go with you know pine bark mulch. So you better get your pine bark mulch now before it goes up to four dollars a bag. I'll be doing that next weekend for sure. Um, what's the next opportunity here? Well, as I said, expecting more distressed properties, guys. The timing is actually happening now, and I'll, in a future video this week, I'm going to talk about what we're seeing, what I've communicated with a lot of people on, what I've been told by some insiders in the industry, but what's happening right now. So things are starting to actually change, though it's not apparent. It won't be apparent quite yet in the retail world, which we all see. That's what the media talks about. But behind the scenes, things are actually changing, and there's cracks in the industry. So expect more distressed properties to come through in the future. Owners will need to sell, time to liquidate for investors. We're going to see an uptick in foreclosure auctions, uptick in foreclosure filings. We'll eventually see more short sales listed. Then eventually become more REOs. The numbers will be bigger, uh, they'll be more available than, than it's predicted. Uh, we are not seeing the true numbers. You know, that's kind of my thing is that what we're being told on a weekly basis by, oh, forbearance is better, et cetera, et cetera. Again, there's, there's not, these are just you know, estimates you know, that, that, that are going on. They're not real numbers as far as I'm concerned. Why do you want to get involved in the stress housing? Well, here's an example of short sales. So this is my metro here, the Tampa Bay metro area. You can take a look at, um, for, for the Tampa, St. Petersburg, Clearwater, MSA, uh, the most recent information we have for this MSA is February 2021. Median house price uh, for a single family home in the area was two ninety. You can see that the foreclosure REO median house price was 278, so not much discount there. But the short sales came in at a median price at 217 and change. So we're looking at you know three percent of all the sales in this area, uh, the single family residential homes were were short sales, which is which means nothing, which means no one's doing them. You saw there's about a 26 percent discount over retail, which is roughly 77 k in equity. So if people are like, well, why should I do short sale? Why should I look at stuff like this? Because that's the reason why there. You're going to buy cheaper. Uh, and these are what I call retail short sales. This isn't even having somebody advocate for you, pushing the price down and working a specific system designed to get to you better pricing. That's what I do. And that's why I need to get a hold of me. So just keep that food for thought. Uh, that's the scoop, guys. So not much going on here. Um, GetHousingData.com. Go check that out. I partner with Foreclosure.com. If you want to find the number one location in the country for distressed property listings, which are pre-foreclosures, foreclosure auctions, uh, cash sales, tax deed sales, the whole bit, go to GetHousingData.com. Subscribe. It's very economical per month. And you know it can show you what's actually happening in your market. So GetHousingData.com. Check it out. There's a seven-day free trial, uh, but it's very, very economical um, monthly fee. Uh, it's under $40 a month just so you can see what's happening. The better educated, the more you know about your local market, the better off you're going to be down the road. So again, talking about the opportunities, I'll tell you about just connect with me. That's my email. Send me your information. Make sure I can uh, text you on your cell phone, etc. So that's the scoop, guys. We'll be doing some more videos this week. So again, that's how you get a hold of me. Thanks for the views, likes, comments. Please subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Reach out to me for opportunities and we'll look forward to speaking with you in a couple of days.